This episode of Ask a Spaceman is brought to you by my friends at Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people not unlike yourself. You can explore new skills, you can deepen your existing passions, or you can just get lost, which is so much fun. I especially recommend a few categories for you to check out because I know you're a very creative and passionate person. Things like freelance and entrepreneurship, web development, productivity, just how to survive in the 21st century, especially the class Pricing Your Work, How to Value Your Work as a Freelancer by Peggy Dean. How many times do you have a creative idea and you like to make things and you just don't know how much you could charge and you want to give it away for free because you're a decent human being, but you shouldn't and this class will help you. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, there's always, they're always adding new things, and you can stay focused and follow wherever your creative creativity takes you. That's pretty cool. And it's less than 10 bucks a month with an annual subscription. Now check it out. The first 1000 of my subscribers who click the link below will get a free trial of premium membership and just get to it. It's going to be tons of fun. I guarantee it. Thank you. Skillshare. Now on with the show. I'm going to explain to you how the Heisenberg uncertainty principle works. Like we all know the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And if you don't, Welcome to an introduction. The Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, first posited by Werner Heisenberg, of course. I mean, it'd be odd if we named it after someone who didn't think of it, but that's a separate discussion. Uh, Tells us about uh, limits of what we can know. It tells us that in quantum mechanics, which is our knowledge, our, our physics of how the subatomic world works, there's a limit. There's a fundamental hard limit specifically when it comes to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, if you're trying to measure a particle's position and its momentum simultaneously, which you often want to do, like where is this particle and where is it going and how quickly is it getting there? Very common set of questions. It's saying you can, you can measure these both, but not to as high as precision as you want, not to like infinity precision. You can't know both position and momentum exactly. There is a limit of your uncertainty that you will always encounter. And if you try to measure the position of a particle, the more and more and more and more you know about its position, the less and less and less you know about its momentum and vice versa once you reach this limit. Now, this doesn't really apply in a quantum mechanical sense up here at the macroscopic world, but... Here's how I want you to think about it. The uncertainty principle or uncertainty principles in general are not unique to the quantum world. In fact, you can encounter uncertainty principles in your everyday life. I guarantee it. All you have to do is take a beach vacation. Please take me with you because that'd be really great. When you're on a beach and you're looking out at the waves, the ocean, those waves are rolling in. It's very pretty and soothing and all that. I want you to imagine two scenarios for us to look at. Scenario number one is where all the waves are lined up in nice, neat, perfect rows. So you have like one row of wave crests and it's like perfectly parallel to the shore. And then right behind that is another perfectly parallel wave crest. And then another and another, just these nice rows and it stretches out to the horizon and it's just picture perfect. Okay. Now, if I were to ask you, hey, look at that wave. This is called a plane wave, by the way, in the physics world, because why not? Hey, check out that plane wave over there. What's its wavelength? You would say, oh, Paul, I got this. This is super easy because look, the wavelength is the distance between each wave crest. And so all I have to do is look at one wave crest and then there's one right behind it and one right behind it, one right behind it. I can do a bunch of measurements with a ruler and get its wavelength. Easy peasy. I say, okay, fine. Thank you for the wavelength of that plane wave. Now, where is it? Well, you would look at this plane wave stretching all along the shore, stretching out to the horizon, you'd be like, well, it's right like there. I would say, where? You say, it's right there, like over here, but it goes really far back to the horizon down the shores. You don't know a lot about its position. You know a lot about its wavelength, but not a lot about its position. 
Now contrast that with scenario number two. Scenario number two, we are standing on the exact same beach, but now a tsunami wave is coming in. And it's not like a real tsunami wave, but like one of those uh, like like movie Hollywood tsunami waves. Like it's just a big, giant pulse of water. And that's what we call this kind of wave. We call it a pulse. Now I would say to you, hey, I heard there's a tsunami wave coming. Where is it? And you would say it is right there. It is right. Like I can watch it. I can follow it with my finger. It is like I can point to it and be very, very precise about it. I know a lot about its position. I'm like, great. Well, not great because we're about to be hit by a tsunami. But what's what's its wavelength? What's its wavelength? Well, what is the wavelength of a pulse? That's a little bit harder to tell because you're like, well, there's to measure wavelength, you need to go crest to crest. But pulse is just one crest, like it's nothing, and then there's a bunch of stuff, and then nothing again. So, so what's the wavelength? It turns out, in order to make a pulse, you actually need to add together a lot of different waves of different frequencies, and they all work together. And sometimes they combine together to make the nice big pulse, and then they cancel each other out on the edges, and that's what makes the pulse. So you don't know a lot about the wavelength. You know its position of a pulse but you don't know its wavelength. Contrast it with a plane wave where you know its wavelength, but you know, don't know its position. That is an uncertainty principle that you will encounter in everyday life. Did I mention, and I didn't, that the wavelength of a wave is connected to its momentum? The more you know of a wave's position, the less you know of its momentum and vice versa. It's just wave mechanics, folks. We've known this since the 1800s. Now, how does this uncertainty idea when it comes to waves come into quantum mechanics through the wave particle duality because everything is a wave everything is a wave like you look at an electron it is yes it's acting like a particle and it's bouncing around and, and flying around like a bullet but it's also acting like a wave what we've learned one of the biggest things we learned in quantum mechanics is that everything acts like a wave Everything has a wave of nature, a wave of what? Well, in quantum mechanics, it's a wave of probability. The wave associated with every particle in the universe, including you, like any system, I could just point to this microphone and say, I can assign a wave to it in quantum mechanics. That wave tells me where that particle will be the next time I go looking for it. So where the wave is really, really high, that's a high likelihood, a high probability of finding the particle there when I look for it. And where the wave is really low, that's a really low probability. I shouldn't bother looking because tiny chance that the particle is going to be over there. So you have waves. If you have waves, you have an uncertainty principle because it's part of being a wave. This trade-off between momentum and position. All quantum objects have this wavy nature. So all quantum objects get imbued with this uncertainty principle. And the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is exactly that. The more you know about the position, the less you know about the momentum and vice versa. And that comes from the wave nature of matter, which it shares with waves of all sorts of ocean waves, sound waves, light waves, it doesn't matter. Waves on a slinky, it doesn't matter. All waves share this uncertainty principle at its core. This is just a new application in a weird one because like who would have thought an electron would also be a wave and be subject to the uncertainty principle and you just can't get around it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.